What is going on guys? My name is Gatewood Brown and I have been kayak camping with the Old Town Vapor 10 for the past three years. We're going to explore whether or not I think it is good to recommend to people that are looking to just kayak for day trips, go on camping trips, or if it's a good tool to just have in your garage so that you can take it out whenever. It's interesting though, because we're talking about a big box kayak, and typically those aren't the best for kayak camping. However, they can definitely hold their own, whether you're loading it up with gear or you're just going out for the day and exploring some local waters. And I do have to say that the performance of that Old Town Vapor 10 is actually kind of surprising. So to go back to the beginning of when I first got my Old Town Vapor 10, this would have been three years ago. And believe it or not, I didn't buy it as my first kayak. So when we were planning that first trip, I went with a Sun Dolphin 10-foot kayak. Uh, it's like the Walmart brand, big box, real low quality. Uh, not something I would necessarily recommend, but my brother Bennett had been paddling around the Aruba 10, sorry, the Aruba 8 SS, and he was doing just fine with it. So I was like, heck, I might as well give the 10-foot a go because it has a few more features. So that first trip was a blast. I mean, it was so much fun. But at the same time, we figured out where we failed on the planning process. And by we, I mean me, because I kind of planned the whole thing. And I don't know, it was the first one and we just sent it. But as soon as we finished that trip, there was one category that I really wanted to upgrade and I needed more performance out of my kayak. And so with that, I went searching. Dude, why? There's like so much wind and there's an airplane going overhead. I swear, every time I try to film one of these videos, it just goes haywire as soon as I click record. And now we have a car passing. So that first trip was a blast. I mean, uh, it was full of surprises just because I didn't exactly know how to plan a kayak trip yet. But there was one thing that I really wanted to improve immediately, and that was better performance out of my kayak. That Walmart brand just was not going to cut it. And so I was on the look for something that had a more durable, hard plastic shell that was roto molded out of a single mold so it wasn't multiple pieces of plastic built together. Now. At the same time, I wanted a new kayak, but I was looking on the used market because I didn't quite have the budget to go brand new right now. It was a new hobby for me, and so I just figured there was no need to go full bore until I really knew it was something that I was gonna do for a long time. So I just began peeling through uh, all the ads on Facebook Marketplace, Craigslist, Let Go, Offer Up, and basically anywhere that was going to hold potentially good quality kayaks for a budget price and then I saw it, guys. I saw the Old Town Vapor 10 in that green and yellow color. It was the Angler ver version, and it was listed at a good price. I want to say it was listed for $300. And so I immediately called the guy. I was like, hey, let's meet up. I would like to check it out. And he kind of let me know that he'd only used it like one time in Galveston Bay, and that it had just been sitting in his parents' garage, and they wanted him to get rid of it. So I was like, Perfect, maybe there's gonna be a little room for negotiation. Now, right as I was getting serious about this Old Town Vapor 10 listing, I wanted to make sure that it was gonna be right for what I wanted to do, which was kayak camp and go out for casual day trips, whether that be paddling around a swamp or just hitting up a small creek with Bennett out in the hill country. And there's a lot of really good boats out there. And when you're comparing a big box store boat like the Old Town Vapor 10 versus maybe something that you're going to find at a uh, a local retailer like Austin Canoe and Kayak or TG Canoes, you aren't going to be able to check off every single box on your list. And I kind of knew that going for a sit-in kayak was going to be a little bit harder to bolt gear onto the top of it, just given the Old Town Vapor's hull design. But one of the benefits of getting a sit-in kayak is that it's going to be more stable going through rapids because your body weight is going to be lower center of gravity. However, as soon as you start to bolt gear onto this Old Town, it becomes top heavy because you use that rear deck to put your big heavy bag on. Uh, the rod holders and the floating foam kind of get in the way of shoving a bunch of stuff into the actual hole, 
which is okay. You know, you want to have that safety equipment. But for me, I didn't really ever fish out of the old town. However, I know most people bring a fishing rod with them and it comes with two of those, which are super handy now because I bring a fishing pole with me. And so then I started looking at the raw numbers. The old town was 10 feet long, which is great for storage in my garage. It was 47 pounds, which in the grand scheme of things is really light. And it generally MSRPs for around $500. Granted, typically kayaks go on sale like quite often. So I would almost never recommend buying big box at full price. Now, when you go to a boutique kayak brand like Crescent Kayaks, uh, they don't really run many sales, but they already have a wonderful product that's at a great price. And to kind of put into comparison, like a Hobie Mirage is, it's like 10 feet long. It's going to be like 75 pounds and cost three times as much, like over a grand, which is pretty crazy, but it's a nice boat. So there's a reason why it commands that price tag, but that's not to say that the Vapor 10 will also get the job done. And I think that was my experience with it. And it all kind of starts from the hole. It's a very stiff plastic that you use. It's top notch. It's what you'll find in some of the nicer boats. Uh, so whenever you paddle, the boat doesn't have a lot of flex. Also, when you're bouncing off of rocks, it gives you really good steering and it tracks pretty well for a 10 foot boat. You know, the longer your boat, the better it will track. Uh, Old Town has a decent little keel system and it works just fine for me. At the front, the nose is pretty bulbous. So it charges through waves and it lifts the front of the nose up so that the water doesn't splash into the boat. So it's really good about keeping water out of the boat. It does have some decking around the collar that will drain it towards the back. So that worked out really nicely because me and my crew, we like to go out and run rapids. I think that's our favorite type of river to do. You know, nothing that requires a skirt, but still something that gets your adrenaline going. Uh, and this old town, you know, it charged hard, man. It went through a lot of big water that wasn't like waterfalls and stuff, but a lot of big wave trains and things like that. And so I was like, hey man, let's meet up. I want to pull this off of you. And I got the boat for $200, which for me was an incredible deal. I mean, you're going to pay $200 for a brand new Sun Dolphin. So that was a win. And I could tell right from the beginning that this boat was quality because it has, it has those uh, hard plastic handles. I mean, these are the best handles that I've seen on any kayak. They are hard, they're bolted onto the boat. And so it's great when you want to attach your leash or a dry bag to it, that thing is not going to come off. In fact, on my Ascend H10 the other weekend when it was full of camping gear, uh, we were lifting it up and one of the handle grommets busted out and it's one of those cloth with rubber handles. So I will say that durability has not been an issue with the Vapor 10. This thing is bomb proof. Now, I've been a cheerleader for this kayak so far this review. There are some things I don't like and we're going to start off with the most glaring issue that I'm pretty sure Old Town has fixed, but the seat that is in mine, which is an older model, is absolute trash. This is the most uncomfortable kayak seat that I've ever been in. The Sun Dolphin seat was more comfortable than this Old Town. I mean, by 30 minutes into kayaking, your back will be sore. My buddy did buy a newer Vapor 10, and it does look like they fixed the seat. So he says there are no complaints on his end. That being said, don't go for an older model because it's just not comfortable. The newer ones might be pretty good though. And then the other thing, the way the rod holders are positioned, it really limits the gear storage behind the seat. You can really only fit like maybe a small 10, yeah, probably a 10 liter dry bag down there, some jugs of water, but beyond that, you are not going to get much. And the rear hatch is more of like a, uh, it's like a bowl. So it will collect water and could easily add a couple pounds of weight if you aren't continuously bilging it out. I kind of wish they made that a hatch into the back. That would have been really cool. But as far as kayak performance goes, those are my two or three biggest gripes with the design. My goal with this review is to give you the information that you need to make an educated decision on whether or not you're going to pull the trigger on an Old Town Vapor 10 versus some other boat in that same price category. And with all that, you still need to stay aligned with budget. And for that, the Old Town Vapor 10 is a solid option. Coming in at as low as $200, which was my experience, used once, up to paying almost retail, $400. You know, I think you will be able to find one on the used market pretty easily for $300, assuming that there are big box stores in your area 
and you are in a more populated area where people are constantly buying and selling kayaks, you know, these do come on the market quite often. But at the end of the day, you know, it's kind of hard to recommend a kayak like the Vapor for kayak camping because it was not designed for it, like at all. Whenever Old Town was designing this kayak, I can guarantee you that kayak camping was the last thought in their head, which is okay because even though it does get top heavy when you load it up with gear, it'll still do the job. And kind of like as a live review, Bennett has been paddling his Sun Dolphin Aruba 8. It recently developed a hole and died. So that is super unfortunate, but I lent him the Old Town Vapor 10 for the most recent Lano River trip. And that was his first time really kayaking a nice kayak. He loved it. Yeah, dude. Uh, it was just immediate. We went down the first huge rapid and Bennett was smiling ear to ear. He just, he felt like it handled well. He really liked the rigidity of the kayak and how there was just a lot more room to maneuver. With the foot pegs, it gives you a lot more stability because you can press your knees against the wall and really lean into turns. On the Sun Dolphin, it just does not do that. So if you're looking at budget kayaks, I would almost just say, avoid the Sun Dolphin line completely and go for a nice used entry level kayak like this Vapor 10. Dude, isn't that a sweet boat? I love it. I think I'm gonna get one. Keep an eye out, they're big boxes. And then when you're just looking at its stance on the water, me personally, I think it looks nice and aggressive. This is a wonderful looking kayak. You know, the color schemes are really cool. Mine is kind of like a special edition. It's that green and yellow, and I don't know, I think it looks so steezy. And then my buddy got the orange and yellow, which is a classic combination. Then they have a few others. They do make a 12 foot version. However, I'm not sure if I can recommend it because once you get into the 12 foot, I would almost say hit up a sit up on top kayak for that price range and that type of boat because 12 feet, if you're in a sit-in, that's going to be more of a touring style boat. This old town isn't really made for touring. Now I have seen a couple that goes out in Washington and paddles lakes and loads up their 12 foot old town vapors and they've been riding them for years and they love them. For me, what I do in the rivers, if I go 12 foot, I'm going sit on top because bilging does get old. Every time you go through a rapid that's of size, you will get water in the boat. And if you don't bilge it out, then you're hauling around extra weight, which that's what we're trying not to do when we go on these camping trips. But over the years, the durability has shined through and that's what I look for in a product. The Old Town Vapor 10 will 100% stay in my garage as a tool. Although it won't be my primary kayak, this will be something I lend out to friends and will also be a great option for them. It's not a cheap feeling boat and it's going to get the job done. This vapor, it's not gonna be what holds you back. So guys, go check out some of my adventure videos to see this kayak in action. It's a wonderful little craft and I'll be using it for years to come. See ya.